<laughs> that are like earthquakes and tidal waves. All those things have been mitigated and taken care of. Eretz Yisrael and the Jewish people hopefully will not suffer any of these uh, effects this year or whatever is decreed by God for the rest of the world. And every year a certain amount of stuff happens. God only knows why. And as far as I'm concerned, we have just now spiritually made war on, on the nations of the world that hate us, those that hate us, and we've spiritually taken care and muted and, and uh, defeated them before they even come out to war against us. That's the point of the Lulav and Ezra. It's like a spear, it's like a sword, and but it's only, wave it around. But it's only ephemeral. It's, 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 it's spiritual, it's, and spiritual stronger than physical. God rules over the world from, from the spiritual world, from the heavens, and, and it's, he's stronger than all the physical world put together that he created. He's still stronger than them. How about the uh, United Nations uh, who, would, who denied any uh, Jewish uh, uh, rights to uh, Harabayas? The, the United Nations are the United Nations united against Israel. So that's, that's what they are and that's what they've always been. And we just discount their existence or their power we, 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 we say that whatever they say has no effect on us. We're not afraid of them. They're lying. They always have been lying. The world has always hated us because we have the Torah and we have the chosen people. And they're jealous now that they were rejected by God because they rejected him. And we're chosen and loved by God. And so therefore, ever since they've been trying to wipe us out, out of their rage and hatred and jealousy. And it's just... This is just a continuation of the of the same thing from the time of Mount, Mount Sinai on. The, they hate us. They're afraid of us. We have God on our side. And as soon as we deserve it, God does tremendous miracles to protect us. and destroys our enemies in six days, uh, like in 1967. Uh, miraculous wars to keep them from wiping us out. And we have Hashem on our side. And no other nation in the world has a Shem on their side like we do. And because of that, they want to... It's just going back to Titus. Titus hated Judea, the nation that he conquered, the base of Mictus that he destroyed, the temple he destroyed. And after we were through rebelling, even after the temple was destroyed three times in 120 years, we got through rebelling, and unfortunately we didn't succeed, especially in the Bar Kokhba one when we almost succeeded. So he decided to wipe Judea off the, off the map, and he called it Palestinia after the old Philistines who were long gone, the Plishtim were long gone by them. But he, they, he, they had history and they were new, these people existed. And they had the Bible and they saw Goliath was the, from the Philistines, so he named it Palestinia. Right? And that's where the Palestine, Palestinians get their, that get their uh, name from. It has nothing to do with the name, it, it was called Judea. And then it was the Shomron and Judea. The state of Israel was divided into a northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom called Judea, Yehuda. And who, and who lived there at that time? Jews. Only Jews. <laughs> there, there was nothing but Jews there. There were some going there, I guess, but we didn't kick them all out. That was our problem. We were supposed to have done that. But the bottom line is, ever since then, they've been trying, he tried to wipe the memory of the Jewish people off the planet, off the history, annals of history, and it didn't succeed. So the, the, the UN is just coming along. Johnny come lately, trying to do the same thing. And one of the problems is, Marikana says, is because we don't leap on our territory we, that God liberated for us back in 67. We don't leap on and say, this is mine, we lost it for 2,000 years, this is mine, because we have an Israeli government that's too cowardly, that's too meek, that's too fearful of what the Goyim will say, what America will say especially. So they leave it in this no man's land, and so the world can say, yeah, you guys had nothing to do with it, that's why you're not claiming it. So they say the first and second temple are myths and mythology, and they're just bubba mices, they're just stories. And the, the end result is they cause a lot of harm to our cause because the Israeli government refuses to let us up on Harabayas, refuses to get rid of the Arabs desecrating it and, and push them off of there and get those abominations down from off of there, the mosques, and build and help us and allow us uh, access there, not for a, for a synagogue. It would have been great to have a synagogue 40, nine years ago when we liberated it. But now it's too late for a synagogue. We've waited long enough, we're not waiting another 20 years for it to be approved and built. We want a base of Mikdash. 
We don't want to pray up there. We want to serve God up there with Corbanus like the Torah says. And therefore, the Israeli government has got to get out of the way. If they're not, they're too afraid to do it, then let somebody rule Israel that's not too afraid to stand up to the going. And then we'll see the miracles of Hashem again, like David saw and Shlomo saw and, and Hashmanoim saw. And that's what we have to have courage. That's the, the, uh, that's the uh, word of the day. We have to have courage in order to prove to Hashem that we really have faith in Him and we really trust Him. Amuna and Betachem. Until we show that as Hashem is not redeeming us, or He's redeeming us, but in a very, very slow, painful process with a lot of suffering, unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of terrorism because the Arabs aren't afraid of us because we're, we're, we're holding back. And because we're holding back, they feel they have free license and nobody's going to, nobody's going to, challenge going to to wipe them out and put a stop to what they've been doing now since before the state and it just continues into the state and further to this very day god forbid every day almost you hear of an incident happening where a jew is hurt or, or attempted murder or murder and it's got to stop and the only way to stop it is for the jewish people to take control of eretz Israel and to annex all the territories throw the arabs out and tell the world to jump in the lake you want to come in a war? Fine, it's already predicted. Gogo Magog, you're going to die. You're going to fail. It may look like you're going to win, but you're going to fail. If we show this kind of contempt for the world, because we're the holy people, we're the special chosen people, and this is what Hashem expects from us, to stand up to them. Like we stood up to Egypt and took their lamb, their God, and slaughtered it, put the blood on the doorpost to, to, to in their face, to, to mock them and deride them for their idolatry. And we weren't afraid of what they were going to do. We trusted in God to protect us. If we do the same thing over Yerushalayim and Harabayas, if we do the same thing over Oliver to Israel, the whole world with all their nuclear bombs put together, will not be able to stop us. God will protect us. Hashem will come to our rescue. This is what he's waiting for. Our trust and faith in him so he can bring the full final redemption.